Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Zodiac Bandit, and today I'm going to be going over my top three favorite moments from Campaign 3 of Critical Role. I did my favorite fights, so none of those fights, as much as I enjoyed them, will be on this list. Uh, just to kind of keep fights and moments separate, even though they can technically be the same thing. I've decided to keep them separate just so I can not have the same list, because it would be pretty close if I decided to have the fight with Odohan and the Death Wish run on this list, they would be the top two out of, of three. So it'd be pretty well the same list. So not going to have them on this list. This is a moments. That was a fights video. So these are the top three moments of campaign three so far as of episode 42. And later this week, episode 43 comes out. So hopefully nothing there tops this list. Otherwise, I'm making another video next week about the same shit. So, quick disclaimer before we get started. Spoilers if you haven't watched up to episode 42 of Critical Role Campaign 3. That's your last chance. Well, I'm going to keep spitballing until I feel like I have truly given you enough time. But yeah, if you haven't seen up to that point yet, or if you haven't seen any of this campaign yet, I'm sure you don't care if you get spoiled or anything like that. But anyway, if you haven't seen it, this was your last chance. Spoilers ahead. Let's get to the list proper. In a, a surname or anything like that. Did you give yourself your name or? No, no. Um, my former associate gave me my name. Um, she named all of her uh, all of her creations after her favorite uh, smells. Hmm. Oh, that's lovely. There was a bunch of us. Uh, there was there was me. There was oatmeal. Uh, there was apple pie. There was pussy. Um, there was a oh. bunch of a bunch of us. Wow. It's so nice to see other people having to hear this. It's really just bringing everything into sharp perspective. This has been a day. <laughs> that took me a bit by surprise. This has been a day. Uh, you, you, uh, what was what was your name? <laughs> so wow, it was just thrown out there so quick. Um, Did you say so help? <laughs> 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 My name is Fern. <laughs> yeah. I, it's so fun. I've, I've heard of creatures like you. I love this moment. It's from the first episode of this campaign, and it's fucking hilarious. It is simply, in my opinion, one of the best uh, jokes in this entire campaign so far, and it happened right away. Just the fact that episode one of campaign three, Matt is broken already. The, his the face, after it's said how everyone can't keep themselves together... Kills me every time. I love looking back at this moment. Especially, like, when you really think about it. We kind of learned a little bit about Dancer here. And it's truthful. And, you know, it might actually be one of your favorite smells. Anyway, um, definitely a funny moment. Uh, it catches me. It caught me off guard so bad. Uh, this was back during the early parts of the campaign. When uh, I actually had my brother watching it with me. Before he elected to fall way behind. And is incredibly far behind he needs to catch up but fell behind so me and him died of laughter and i wish we could have rewound it because you can't rewind it uh while it's live so that sucked but ever since then i've looked this up at least once a week died of laughter every single time i love it and it just kills me everyone literally everyone breaks it's impossible not to break but everyone broke real bad here even Talzin, who I think he knew beforehand, Talzin starts to break at one point. It is so goddamn funny, and I love that moment. It's excellent and hilarious, and I'm going to go look it up again. Starts to embody her form of tread. But this time, you see her. Her normal morning veil kind of cracks and crumbles and falls kind of in the same way that the leaf does. And she just takes the sun tree and embodies it. And from onlookers, it looks like branches start sprouting from her shoulders 
And you see almost an entire life cycle, a season's worth. Or a year's worth of seasons. As the branches bloom and then wither and then fall. Until eventually she drops it. So the moment you just saw was Ladna coming back and sort of embodying her new form of dread uh, after the sun tree, but it's actually technically not the entire moment I want to talk about here. The moment I want to talk about is more so her revival and her reintroduction to Whitestone and the way she reacts with everybody and all the people there, uh, Percy and everyone else. I really loved this whole, I believe it's the first half of episode 38. I loved all of it. I thought it was really cool the way that she kind of took the moments in and Marisha's role play is like always fucking fantastic. And it it's a true sense of acting like Marisha should act in more things. But this moment, this series of moments, like when she talks to the kid, when she makes everyone touch the, the sun tree, when she embodies her new form, when she wakes up and goes outside and there's a platoon of guns pointed at her. I love this whole first half of episode 38 and to me it is it was a sort of restart point for the campaign because they had kind of fallen off the tracks a little bit gotten away from everything to go and pursue her and then when they got her back they were able to get back on track and this was sort of the moment where that all started because they got serious again or at least in many people's in uh potentially many people's idea may be serious for the first time because up to this point they were kind of super heavy joke characters and they were all sort of goofy and they didn't care until Lana died and then we're here. So this moment to me was like a good reset for all of them to sort of understand the consequences of everything that goes on and it was excellent role play and I can never look past that as I think role play is, you know, kind of important in a role playing game. So love this moment. I feel like it is a spectacular moment and I think I've sort of solidified Lana as my favorite character. And if this one doesn't do that, the next one will. Chest. She won't let me let go. And now that cold becomes I just a warm heartbeat. Grab her hand. Wait, it what? It does what? That cold <laughs> bass sound becomes a warm heartbeat as the warmth hits your chest. And at that moment, your fingers pull open, and the gem is cold and broken. Ooh. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. What no. just happened? Uh-oh. Hey, Midgen. I don't know what just happened. You lied. No. No. This might be one of the most emotional bits in the entirety of this campaign. Because, and I just mean from like the role play aspect, because the emotions that they brought to the table and the way they like they make you feel watching it like these are sisters or best friends or in a lot of people's eyes like a potential relationship so watching this nearly crumble away here or for a while actually crumble away was fairly interesting i love this moment uh we get delilah moment which is good and like her sort of control her weird control over ladna which to me was a, or still could be a fun aspect of this campaign. And we got to see sort of almost an addict freak out when their drug was taken away with Imogen. And I love that. Um, I, I thought it was very interesting the way she kind of went around it. She's like, you lied. Don't do anything to it. And Ladna even said, I'm not going to do anything to it. I don't, Why would I ever do something like that to anything that you want so badly? Or like that you like so badly. And then this happens, and I can almost feel the gears turning in Matt's head when she said, I'm not going to break it or anything like that, don't do anything stupid. And to me, this moment is a lot of fun. It leads to a bit of a, a clash between the two characters for a handful of episodes of begrudging, uh, we have to work together for an hour relationship, which eventually disappears and goes away. But it was still fun, this setup, and like a bit of tension, um... Relationships like this, you know, as a DM, you use those to create tension in a game. So that was excellently done. 
and again, the role play is amazing. The you know the consequences afterwards, albeit short lived, the consequences they were still good because we got to see Ladna and Imogen sort of spread out and talk to more people a bit more in depth about other things, and it was really cool and really fun to see them spread out and ask other people how they should handle this moment. And we got to get a bit of insight into other characters about how they would handle a moment like this. So, overall, an excellent moment that led to a handful of other excellent moments down the line. And then, uh, one more thing I want to point out about this is Ashley. Ashley, in my opinion, is the biggest shipper of Laudan and Imogen on the planet. Why? Look at her face when Imogen says, you lied. Just go back and look at her face and tell me. She doesn't ship the shit out of these two. It is perfect. It is an amazing reaction. And it adds a little bit of... I don't want to say humor. But like... It, it makes me laugh. And I love... Uh, I love a... Moment that's a little serious. That can also make you laugh. If you look at the right places. And for fuck's sake. She makes me laugh so hard with her facial reactions to this. Because it's... So good. So there you have it. My favorite moments of campaign 3 so far. Uh, let me know what yours are down below. And we are so, so close to 400, I can taste it. 400 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, that would be awesome. Because I think 400 by the end of the year would be really cool. Because I didn't think I'd ever hit 100. Didn't think I'd ever hit 50. So here to be, I think it's four away from 400 would be really cool to hit that. And yeah. That'll be going into the next year. But later this week, we have, I believe, our last episode of Critical Role Campaign 3 this year. And then I think it's a one-week break, and they'll be back within the new year, which is really cool. So yeah, can't wait for that. And in the new year, I'm going to be able to do videos a lot better. And I'll explain later then, or I'll explain later what I mean by that. Until then, uh, that's been my list. Hope you guys have a good day. Peace.